Joining us now is Greg Zuckerman, special writer at The Wall Street Journal, who recently wrote about the rise of these new day traders, as well as maybe the book on the market the last decade, The Man Who Solved the Market, about Jim Simons and the Quant Revolution, which I recommend to everybody, a fantastic read. Just, Greg, slightly different than what we're seeing now. Simons trades billions of shares every day. Um, what do you make of the rise of the Robin Hooders and the other day traders? Good thing? Bad thing? Hey, Brian. So the temptation is to be concerned. Uh, generally speaking, we call these people the dumb money for a reason. They panic. They have greed. They get into the wrong time in the market. They really aren't based in their trading on much in the way of knowledge. Um, I hesitate to some extent just because the evidence suggests that in March at the panic, at the lows, it was sort of hedge funds that were panicking and selling, and it wasn't individual investors. So, yeah, most of me is concerned, but part of me embraces the fact that small investors, individuals are getting into the market and are saving a little bit. And to the extent that they don't blow it, <laughs> it will be OK phenomenon. Exactly. I mean, for years, people screamed, oh, the retail investor is gone. Where's the re now the retail investor is back and the same people are screaming, oh, there's too many retail investors. They're going to get burned. I think, yes, people will get burned. But you know how you learn lessons? You learn lessons by failing and coming back up often. I mean, this could ultimately be a long term positive for the equity market, at least in my not so humble opinion. It's a good argument. So listen, I got two boys upstairs who are on the Robin Hood accounts. They're, they're sleeping right now, but they will be later today. And will they lose their money? They probably will. I look at it as an inexpensive lesson, but it gets them into investing. Uh, they learn about companies. Uh, there's some value in this. You don't want people to be blowing important money. Now, we, what we wrote about is this phenomenon where too many people are taking their em uh, employment checks, the $600 and day trading it, often sort of penny stocks. And that's a little scary, um, especially since they kind of acknowledge not knowing too much about the market and the stocks themselves that they're investing in. But there is a happy medium where we embrace uh, a new group of young investors. And frankly, for years, at least at the Journal, we were hearing about young people who were ignoring the market So there's and, and not even saving. So perhaps there's something good that comes from this. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, Greg, and I'm not going to reveal any names to protect the guilty. I dropped something off uh, with an elderly friend yesterday, just kind of help him out, not trying to seem like a good guy, just d delivering something socially with the mask, of course. And this person, true story, asked me about Novavax. Yeah, what I thought about oh, no. you know, I don't give stock advice. I was like, you know, I don't know. I mean, I know who they are, but I'm, I'm not going to. So it's not just the young. This person's in their 70s. Yes, and not just those who uh, can't gamble and uh, can't play uh, the, the market. Um, it's not like through. the DraftKings, people that have stopped gambling on sports, right? It, it's not just them. Right. Listen, a bull market will get everybody uh, enthused. You listen, one has to be cautious here. A lot of these people are used to gambling. And th there are some that I've talked to who say, yeah, I'm having fun here. I'm learning a little bit playing the market. I can't bet on certain other things. Let's say go go to Vegas. So they embrace the risk. Just like you go to Vegas, you lose some money, you've had a good time. That's fine. I've talked to a number of those people. You don't really want people to put a chunk of their savings or their, their wealth uh, into the market without much in the way of knowledge. But to the extent that they're learning about it and uh, not risking it all, then I embrace that. But, but very quickly, Greg, since you've written about Jim Simons, probably the single most powerful individual in the stock market in history, maybe with the exception of, you know, like, a, I don't know, Jesse Livermore 100 years ago, the individual investor doesn't have a play, a way as easy to play downside moves. It's not like these people, I mean, they can short, but it's expensive. There's a cost associated. It's not free. You've got to borrow the shares. That's the ultimate risk, right, is that the guys like the Simonses and the Ken Griffins of the world, they can push the market around on the downside and profit. They don't care which way it moves. Well, the individual, individual investors that we've written about uh, who play Robin Hood, they can do things like buy options. And frankly, too many are doing that. But that's sophisticated trading. And when you get into those kinds of trades, you're going up against Jim Simons and Ken Griffin of Citadel. And frankly, those are the people that are loving this phenomenon because they're on the other side of often these trades. And that's what I do worry yeah. about when it becomes uh, when the individual investors embrace much more risky kind of option type 
uh, dangerous behavior or risky behavior. So that, that really gets me concerned.